Hi, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So with this video, I am actually starting a, a new tutorial series on my channel and uh, this uh, series uh, will be all about uh, Paging Tree Library and uh, Jetpack Compose. So uh, in this uh, tutorial series, uh, we are going to create uh, one uh, simple application in which uh, we are going to implement uh, Paging Tree Library and uh, Jetpack Compose. Now, our application will use uh, Unsplash API to fetch uh, different uh, images from that uh, server and uh, we are going to paginate the response from that uh, server using a paging tree library. Now, uh, in this uh, tutorial series, uh, you will learn uh, how to paginate the data from a network, but also how to paginate a data from a room library or from your local database. And uh, not just that, I'm going to also show you how to use a remote mediator with remote keys so you can cache all that data which you receive from your server into your local database. Which means that after you cache that data locally to your uh, database, uh, then you will be able to access that uh, same data in your Android application without an internet connection. So now let me show you how our application uh, will actually look like. So our uh, simple application uh, will have uh, two different screens. The first screen uh, will be home screen, in which uh, we are going to display all those uh, images from our uh, Unsplash API or from a list of photos endpoint. And uh, inside our application, with the help of a Jetpack Compose, we are going to design this uh, simple image holder, where uh, in the background uh, we are going to display this uh, image from uh, Unsplash API, and on the bottom we are going to give uh, the credit for that uh, author, which uh, has uh, uploaded that specific image on uh, Unsplash API. And then on the right side of that, we are going to show here a number of likes, which uh, that uh, same image has on uh, unsplash.com. And uh, all those uh, unsplash images are actually displayed inside a lazy column. So we can just uh, scroll down below and you can also see this uh, a beautiful and smooth uh, crossfade effect. We can also see this uh, placeholder image if we look uh, and scroll uh, even faster. So there you go. Also, if we open up our local database here, let me just uh, show you. So actually we are going to have uh, two different uh, database tables. The first one is uh, called the Unsplash image table, which will contain basically all uh, Unsplash images that we receive from our uh, Unsplash API. And down below you can see all the items or all the images that we have downloaded. We have a different page here as well. So in total uh, we have uh, downloaded here uh, 59 images. And also here we have uh, this uh, Unsplash remote uh, keys table which is uh, basically used by our remote uh, mediator, which is actually a class from our paging tree library that uh, will allow us to automatically cache uh, that data which we receive from our API. And this remote uh, keys uh, database table will contain the previous and next uh, page keys so that our remote uh, mediator can know uh, which page to request uh, next from our network or from our API. So basically with our paging tree library and the remote mediator, we will be able to paginate through the data from our API response page by page. So whenever we open up our application for the first time, uh, then we are going to receive uh, some number of uh, unsplash images. And whenever we scroll through this uh, list of uh, lazy column, and whenever we uh, reach uh, the bottom of that list, or basically one of the last items uh, from our local database, uh, then our paging tree library by default will send a signal to our remote mediator to request uh, a new data from an API automatically. So basically from our side we don't have to do anything from here, we just need to scroll down below and the new items will uh, automatically load into our database. So let me just show you. And there we go. So now we have uh, downloaded uh, new items uh, from that same API. So as you can see, the last item was uh, 59. And now we have requested some new uh, images as well. So there we go. We have even more. Anyhow, uh, that was our first uh, home screen in which we have implemented that remote mediator and uh, offline caching as well. And the second uh, screen is actually a search screen which uh, will send a uh, GET request to a different uh, endpoint on our Unsplash uh, website. And there we can search for specific images. For example, here we can write dog and we can search uh, all those uh, dog images. There we go. Now this uh, second uh, search screen does not use a remote uh, mediator to store or to cache that data. 
because in our search screen we actually don't need to cache that data, we only need to request a new data from our API. And for this specific search endpoint, we are going to implement a custom paging source. And by the way, uh, this application also supports a dark mode. So let me just uh, switch here the theme to a dark theme. There we go. So now we can go back. Perfect. And uh, everything here uh, works uh, as expected. Okay, so now that you have seen how our actual application uh, will look like, now I'm going to cover some uh, theory basics about uh, paging tree library in general. I'm going to talk about uh, some of the most important uh, classes uh, which are a part of uh, paging tree library. And then from the next video in this uh, series, we are going to actually start uh, setting up the project and uh, start uh, working with this application. But for now, I'm going to cover some uh, theory about uh, Paging Tree Library, and uh, I highly suggest you to keep watching this video, because in this video, I'm going to cover some uh, important stuff about this library, which uh, everyone should know. So uh, first, uh, let's uh, start with the basics. Uh, what is a Paging Tree Library anyway? What are the main functionalities it has to offer to us developers? The short answer, a paging tree library is uh, mostly used to paginate the data from different uh, data sources. That uh, can be for example from a room database or from an API. But uh, what do I mean by that uh, paginate the data? Well, that means that the uh, paging tree library uh, will be able to provide us the data page by page. For example, when uh, getting the data from the database, we don't have to read uh, all items uh, from the database all at once, Instead, we can read it page by page, which means that the data will be loaded in a small chunks. Now, for example, uh, when a user opens the application, not uh, all data will load at once. Instead, uh, more items from the data source uh, will load as the user uh, scrolls through the list, page by page. Uh, this, in general, uh, will increase the performance of our application. Now, the paging library includes the following features. In-memory caching for your uh, page data, which ensures that uh, your application uh, uses uh, system resources efficiently while uh, working with the page data. Then uh, the first uh, class support for uh, Kotlin coroutines and flow, as well as uh, live data and their RxJava. Then uh, we can uh, automatically request the correct uh, page when the user has uh, scrolled through the end of the list. We can ensure that uh, multiple requests uh, are not uh, triggered at the same time. It will allow us to cache our data. It will allow us to track a loading state. Also, uh, it will allow us to execute some uh, common operations like a map or a filter. Okay, so now that you kind of understand uh, what the paging tree library actually is, uh, I'm going to introduce you with uh, some of the most uh, important uh, classes uh, that belong to this library as well. Now first, uh, let's uh, start with a paging source. So a paging source uh, will uh, retrieve the data from a single data source, like a network, a local database, and so on. A paging source uh, takes uh, two parameters, a key and a value. And the value parameter is the type of the data that uh, will be loaded and uh, displayed to the users. And uh, with a key, we define uh, which page of data to load. Now, key is uh, usually an integer value representing either a page number or an item position, or even a string if you are using a string as the next token returned with uh, each response. Also, a room library supports a paging tree library by default, which means that whenever you want to paginate the data from the local database, you don't have to implement your own uh, paging source class, instead uh, everything is uh, handled for you. The only thing that uh, you need to do is uh, to add a paging source uh, wrapper class as a return type of the function that is reading your database. And uh, you will see that in practice uh, when we actually start uh, implementing a paging tree library in our project. Also, an instance of a paging source is uh, used to load uh, pages of data for an instance of a paging data. And uh, that's when a uh, paging data class uh, comes into play. So a paging data is a container for a paged data from a single generation of loads. And the paging data queries data from its uh, paging source in a response to a loading hint, which uh, can be generated as the user scrolls in the lazy column. Now, uh, when uh, we want to see more data, we usually scroll the list, and uh, whenever we scroll that uh, list, in this case a lazy column list, uh, then our paging data and a paging source are uh, notified, and a new page of data is received, 
if uh, there is one of course. So uh, each uh, refresh of data uh, will have a separate corresponding paging data. Now, uh, to control how and uh, when a paging data uh, queries data from its uh, paging source, we can use a paging config class. And a paging uh, config class is uh, used to configure behavior within a pager as uh, it uh, loads the content uh, from a paging source. A paging config class uh, accepts uh, multiple parameters. Uh, the first one is a page size which basically defines the number of items uh, loaded uh, at once from the paging source. Uh, usually this uh, page size number uh, should be several times uh, higher than the number of uh, visible items on the screen. In uh, our case and uh, in our project uh, which uh, we are going to build in this uh, tutorial series, there uh, will be actually around uh, two or maybe three unsplash uh, images uh, visible inside our list which means that uh, we could have uh, added uh, more than 3 items per page. In our case, uh, that uh, can be even a uh, number 10. Also, if you are loading the data from a very large uh, social media style cards that uh, take up the most of the screen, then uh, 10 or 20 items of a page size makes sense. And uh, if you are displaying uh, dozens of items in a small grid, which uh, can basically show items during a scroll much more quickly, uh, then you can consider increasing the page number to even a 100. Uh, next uh, important parameter of our paging uh, config class is uh, initial load size. And uh, this parameter will define a requested uh, load size for initial load from a paging source. And uh, this uh, value is uh, typically larger than a page size. So whenever we uh, load uh, some data in our application initially, that uh, number uh, should actually be a little bit uh, higher than our page number. And uh, a default uh, value for this initial load size is a uh, page size times 3. Then uh, after that we also have a max uh, size parameter, which basically defines the maximum number of items that uh, may be loaded into the paging data before uh, pages uh, should be dropped. And uh, this uh, can be used to cap the number of items in memory by dropping pages. And this value is uh, typically many pages, so that uh, all the pages are uh, cached in in the case that user scrolls back. And of course this uh, paging config class uh, accepts uh, some more parameters. Anyhow, I have just uh, wanted to mention those that uh, I really find uh, important. There are also some more uh, useful classes uh, from a paging tree library that uh, you should know about. But uh, anyhow, there is just uh, one more uh, class which uh, I think that uh, I need to mention here as well. And that uh, class is a remote uh, mediator. So the main purpose of a remote uh, mediator is uh, to combine a local storage with a remote queries in order to provide a consistent data flow to the users, regardless if your network is available or not. Basically, it means that uh, with a remote uh, mediator, we will be able to implement uh, offline caching uh, very easily. So a remote uh, mediator implementation uh, will help us to load the uh, page data from the network into our database and not to load the data directly into our UI. Instead, uh, our application will use a local database as a single source of truth. So uh, in other words, our application uh, will display only the data that uh, has already been cached into our database. And uh, whenever we want to paginate uh, from our room database, we don't need to implement uh, a custom paging source because uh, that uh, custom paging source has uh, already been uh, generated by our room library and we can handle uh, loading the data in a paginating way with our room database uh, automatically. So basically our remote uh, mediator will immediately be notified from our paging library whenever our application has uh, run out of the data. So a remote uh, mediator acts as a signal and with that uh, signal we can load additional data from the network and uh, store that same data in the local database where a paging source can load and provide it to the UI to display it to our users. Now, uh, depending on uh, where you are loading data from, you can uh, implement uh, either a paging source or a paging source and a remote uh, mediator. So uh, if you are loading the data from a single source, like a network, a local database or a file, uh, then you should implement the paging source only. Also, as I already mentioned before, a room database supports a paging tree library by default, so uh, implementing a paging source for a local database is an easy job. 
And uh, if you are loading the data from a layered source, like a network data source with a local database cache, uh, then you should implement a remote mediator to merge those uh, two sources. And the main role of remote mediator is to load more data from the network when uh, either the pager runs out of the data or if the existing data is uh, invalidated. Now, there is also one important thing that goes along with a remote mediator, and that is a remote keys. So, a remote keys are basically the keys that the remote mediator is using to tell the backend service uh, which data to load next. So, for example, if we have uh, loaded uh, two different pages uh, from our API, and uh, each uh, page contains uh, 10 different uh, items, uh, then our remote uh, key database table, which we are going to create, uh, will have uh, 20 different uh, entries in total for each uh, unsplash image that we receive from our server. Now, the first uh, 10 uh, images or the first uh, 10 items from that uh, first page uh, will have the same values for the next and previous page keys because they are actually placed inside the same page. And uh, I'm not going to get uh, any more into details because uh, I don't want to confuse you anymore since uh, we haven't even started with the practical examples. So only when we start uh, implementing a paging tree library in our project, only then uh, you will understand uh, all this uh, theory which uh, I was talking about. Now, I highly suggest you to just uh, go back and watch this uh, first part of this series when you complete the whole tutorial series. And if you're wondering why, uh, well, because uh, after you watch the whole tutorial series, you will have the knowledge of uh, how a paging tree library is actually implemented, and then you will understand this uh, theory even better. Now, that was just some uh, brief uh, introduction with uh, paging tree library in general. There are uh, more things and uh, more classes that I haven't mentioned uh, here for our paging tree library, and uh, also I highly suggest you to just uh, go and read the official Android developers documentation about uh, paging tree library in general. Also, so uh, one more important thing, uh, so for this uh, project uh, we are going to use uh, Unsplash API, which is basically one of the most uh, popular uh, APIs for uh, getting different kind of images. So uh, be sure to comment down below if you have uh, any questions uh, related to this tutorial series. And uh, from the next video we are going to finally start uh, working uh, on our project.